Hey guys, welcome back to the Ride Right Waxing channel. So we're into the summer season and back on the cars, skis and snowboards have uh, obviously died off as you can imagine. Um, back on the Classic Mini. Two years I've actually been on this car, um, which I'm a bit annoyed about, if I'm honest. I need to ramp up my efforts on it. Um, I did kind of lose the love to doing it and I've now refined that. I've re rekindled my love. Um, and we're getting there, we're getting there. And I think the reason for that is I think I've gone a little bit too deep into it. I've gone a little bit uh, uh, OTT, um, but we're getting there. Um, what have I done? Um, I've welded reinforced plates on the underside of the car just here for the roll cage. I've had the roll cage powder coated in this gray, which is quite cool. I'm just mocking up the floor, hence why that one there is wrapped in tape to work out so I can still uh, take my carbon dash out uh, once it's all finished. I've got to get this car back to paint because once you paint it, it looks so much nicer and then I can start bolting all the bits I've been purchasing back into the car. But I'm trying to make sure that I've got everything done so I don't regret leaving something out. And the problem with that kind of mentality is there's always something extra you can add. And uh, I'm always adding extra stuff, which is taking more time, um, which is really frustrating. Now, let me pop you in my hand and let me show you uh, a couple of quick things. And I need some advice. So... Uh, yeah, I need some advice. So let's uh, pop you in my hand and I'll show you a couple of little cool things that I've bought as well as. So first off, I've got myself a 100 litre air compressor and it's super quiet. Listen to this. That's so cool. My other air compressor was so noisy. My neighbours used to get really angry with me. Got my welder, got my little tools, got my little setup. I've got my little trinkets and stuff over there. All the bits that I've had powder coated, battery case. I've got all my other roll cage and my roll cage bits which I had done. There's my bracketry. Uh it's under layers of blanket. There we go. So yeah. That's what I my roll cage bar that I made, which is quite cool. I need to tidy that one up. Got my gear linkage back, so that's all been powder coated. So rebuilt all of that. It's just in there, high gloss, so that's all ready to go. My CAD quick shift and all that. Um brackets and anyway it's all there seats and trying to get it all covered up box of goodies in there from carbon weasel um hence why i need to get my car into paint um, and wherever possible i'm finding little brackets because i need to weld some brackets in for brake lines and fuel lines which brings me on to my boot now i'm going to be cutting this out um so i've got to be dropping my subframe so i need to get the front end into paint so i can get my or the underside into a point where it's, i can put it on a pallet truck um but I need to be able to paint the underside of the car, so I need to get the front subframe in. So I'm just trying to work out the, the process of elimination, trying to so I can then get the rear subframe out, cut the hole out, get the rear subframe reconditioned, which won't actually take that long, because um, obviously I've got really carried away with the inside of the car. Now I'm going to cut this out. Now one thing I need to understand is, well, number one, what fuel tank should I use? Number two, um, is the carbon floor strong enough to hold the fuel tank? Will it wobble and bounce up and down? And number three is what fueling system do I need for injection? You see people with swell pumps and all sorts of stuff, and I just need to understand that. So if anybody's got a really depth in-depth diagram, now there's a guy called Mini Turbo on Instagram that I follow, and he sent me some great photos, but I just need to understand. Somebody's got like a diagram of fuel up, fuel back, and what gauge fuel pipe... So what gauge, aha, anybody recognise that symbol? Uh, what gauge fuel pipe I need um, for the fuel injection system? Now, I am in talks with a guy. Now, I did send my engine off to get rebuilt. Um, I don't think that's been started yet. I'm going to try and contact the guy today. Um, and I'm in talks with a guy um, regarding a CAD engine, a uh, twin cam 16 valve CAD engine, which I really, really, really want to buy. It's a lot of money, but... Uh, if I can get a loan, I will do, and I will try and buy it. Um, I've got some money towards it. I've just got to try and get it across the line. So that's kind of the engine. So I need to understand what fuel system, because I need to run that inside. And question number four is, how do you mount the fuel and brake lines to the inside of your car? Now, I was going to use some little brackets like this and then weld them onto the floor so we can cable tie brake lines and fuel lines to it. I've seen lots of cool things, 3D printed stuff online um, where you can mount it. I just need to understand how people mount their fuel lines and brake lines. Is it just P-clips and they just literally screw it through the floor? 
that's the case, that's what I'll do. Um, but I just need to understand, is it a bracket that I need to make? So if anybody's got any tips on that. So number one, fuel tank, will it wobble on the floor? Um, number two, is a subframe, do I need to modify the subframe? Number three, how do I kind of wire up the fuel system? I need, obviously need a return in advance, but what do I need? Fuel pumps, swell pots, that kind of stuff. And number four, how do you mount the fuel and brake lines inside the car? And is there a set distance and what thickness of fuel line do I need for a fuel injection, say CAD engine? Um, so if anybody can help with one, two, three, four, I'll pop them on the screen. One, two, three, and four. Um, that would be amazing. I would really appreciate that because you guys are the knowledgeable guys. I am not. I am making this up as we go along. And that's why I'm taking so long. But anyway... I'm rambling on. Let's crack on, get some music on, get on some time lapse, crack on the next stage of my car. Here we are, the underside of the car. Now, there's my plate I've welded in. Um, so nice and stout, we've got great heat penetration. Just gonna linish some of this back. All this is paint that's gonna come off. I'm gonna move these boards back just to support the car a bit further back and just take it in sequences so I can clean up to this board. And then what I'll do is move that one forward and so forth. And then I can get into the underside of the floor and start sorting that out. Got to clean all this off. This is just old paint and under seal from years and years and years. This is all solid. I've got six holes, four subframe holes, gear rod change hole and steering rack hole. It's the only holes from the bulkhead into the engine, uh, into the cockpit, which is great. Uh, so really happy with that. Just got to tidy all this up and where the welds come through, just linish all that back and then start cleaning the underside of the floor then all the way back down through to the point where then I can get it ready for paint, mask off, paint the inside, the outside, bolt the sub uh, roll cage back in um, to get some rigidity, put the subframe in, drop it onto its wheels on the front and then I can start on the back. So we're not too far away, but we are quite far away. It's just a lot of messy work now workshop's going to get very dusty taking all this crap off so i can get it ready to be uh, painted and protected and uh, yeah a bit like anti-fouling a bottom of a boat i suppose anyway time lapse let's get my suit on get my helmet on and uh, let's get mucky suited and booted let's get under that car we've got that bad boy just there and let's start taking all this crap off this is where i wish i had one of those spit roast things um that i could spin it around it'd be a lot easier but i haven't and i have got this let's crack on <laughs> go back on the minis you just use just tap it all up so i'm going to clean all this up I've got to clean all this up area here and on the back of here and we've got some holes here as well hence the welder grind all this off because i had a big hole in my floor so i've got to tidy all this up so i've got a lot of linishing but first of all i'm going to get in and clean all this out and weld all this up here strengthening all of that um and it'd be sound like you say that was all covered in under seal so always worth to strip it back i could quite easily have just painted over it but guess what it would have never been there and this is the reason why my project has taken so much longer as much as it was a lovely car on the top and it's a nice car to look at as you can see dare i say it over the years of it going to body shops and being painted there's a multitude of sins it's hiding but we're going to make it right so let's get the welder out let's get some welding <laughs>
right, so quite a few hours of just uh, welding, filling, should we say, with metal and uh, leashing back. We've got all this nice and stout now. We had all these holes just underneath here. This is all now filled. We've got a bit of tidying up to do. That's just some dirt inside there. We've got some linishing to do, which we'll sort out. We've reinforced this area and backfilled this. So this is nice and strong. We've put a, a layer in here and in here to reinforce it. Um, as well as just, uh, yeah, just filled up some holes and uh, yeah, that's ready to go. Like I say, it's not concourse. I didn't want it to be, but what the main thing is, is it's not got rust and it's proper strong now. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, cleaning off to do. Downside is, got a little bit hot. That's still polish off, but we took the paint off there, which I'm a bit peeved about. So no doubt I will have to do some painting of said car once it's all finished. Work in progress though. This is the bits that uh, I knew were there and I just wanted to turn my blind eye to, but uh, we're facing my fears and we're getting it sorted out without having to replace panels. And uh, if anything, I'm overloading it with some weld to make it nice and strong and nice and thick. Just before we close, let me show you what this looks like with some primer on it. Right. So there we are. The primer highlights a few areas. It's going to tidy up this bit. Obviously, we haven't zip wheeled this area here, but this is the area that had all the holes in. Pretty much from here all the way down to here. We welded up here and this is this had loads of holes this had loads of holes in here going into the seal we've still got to tidy all this up and zip wheel all this back but this is purely and simply to highlight any little areas like this little hole here um which is hard to see when it's metal but yeah that really pleased with that that's super solid ignore all the runs we'll sand all this back anyway but this is just a kind of first phase from the welding and linishing so i'm really chuffed with that Really chuffed with that, that's come up lovely. Um, must admit, you can get a lot done with a little welder. I must, uh, the best investments, I would say. So, yeah, dead happy with that. And uh, like I say, it'll be better when it's all painted. But like I say, we've got a few areas just to tidy up. But there you go, that is uh, it finished. So much for doing all of the underside of the car and taking all the crap off. First five minutes, got caught with loads of holes, but that's the benefit of stripping it all off. That's it guys, an end of mini video. Very short one, but just thought I'd give you an update. I am working on it, but uh, it's taking its time. So uh, yeah, guys, like, subscribe, stay with me, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you soon.